It's Little Clips, and I am here joined with my friend. We love horses, and you probably don't know that, but we do love them. And in class, we made slides about horses, and today we're going to be showing them to you because everybody in our class really liked it, and we thought you would too. So let's get on. Welcome to the horse lesson. We're going to teach you about horses. We really hope you enjoy. The anatomy of a horse. The anatomy of a horse. Wait, wait, wait. Lord your horse. In case you do not know, the anatomy is the structure of the inside of an animal. As I was saying, the anatomy of a horse. Okay, here we go. A horse is a mammal, so it breathes their lungs. Those huge pink things are lungs. Horses have huge lungs. Depending on the size of a horse, they could have bigger lungs than us. For example, a large stallion, which is quite big, could very well have bigger lungs than us. A horse's lungs lie directly below the ribcage, but do not go over the last rib. A horse's lungs need to be big because when riding or racing, it needs to have a lot of air so it doesn't fade from our head. Especially when they are galloping. Yeah. We have intestines, well so do horses. Their intestines help them digest food that they eat. We have intestines that help us digest food that we eat. Yes, exactly. They also have a heart just like humans. Our heart beats and pumps blood just like horses. Before we get on to the next part, this is only the basics, so it's not going in detail, no nothing. Those were some muscles of the horse, but let's move on to some bones of the horse. And as she said, this is not going into that much detail. Well, okay, that's kind of me. Let's start with the muzzle of the horse. The muzzle is the nose area of the horse. Yes, exactly. The jaw of a horse is its mouth. Just like us all, horses have jaws to chew. Yep, otherwise we'd be swallowing everything whole. Horses are vertebrates, so they have a spine and an end of skeleton. Do you know what where you put the saddle and saddle pad of the horse, right? Yeah, it's on its withers. Why do you ask? Do you know what the withers are? Yes, I do. A horse's withers is a hump on top of their spine where its saddle and saddle pad is placed. Why yes, that is exactly what the wither is. The rib cage is a cage made on the bones called ribs, which explains the name. The rib cage of a horse protects several organs, such as the heart and lungs. The cockagiel is the tail bone. The cockagiel allows the horse to control his or her tail bone. That sums up the anatomy. Our next topic is breeds of horses. Breed of horse is an Appaloosa. An Appaloosa is most known for its spotted coat, striped coats, and molded skin. Some traits of an Appaloosa are that they are independent, intelligent, and very courageous. But don't let that fool you. The Appaloosa can also be vicious and fierce. That trait contributes to the fact that Appaloosas were used as war horses in the olden days. Appaloosas are wonderful horses. The Mustang is next. The Mustang is sensible, intelligent, and very alert. Mustangs are very good horses to ride and do especially well in endurance races because of their lightweight but sturdy and compact bones. Wild Mustangs are protected by the law. They tend to be small but they have strong bones. Mustangs are usually 15 hands tall and are about 900 pounds. It is very rare that one is above 900 pounds. Grunt, buckin, and roan are the most common color of the, of the Mustang, although they can be almost any color. This breed is a tiger mustang. And we recommend for you not to ride these until you're eligible because they are very dangerous. And they can be aggressive. And when they're aggressive, they can be like really dangerous. One of the most dangerous breeds of horses when they're mad. Yes. The tiger mustang is the only found in only found in one place in the world, which is the southeastern part of the U.S. Tiger mustangs are only re remaining wild horse with Spanish roots. The most common color of the tiger mustang is bay and black. The bay color is a tan and beige. By the way, the bay color is the color shown on the slides. Next breed of horse is a thoroughbred. The thoroughbred is a really fast horse and is most commonly used in races and is in fact one of the fastest breeds of horses in the world. All thoroughbreds can be traced back to three horses, Meyerly, Turk, Goldolphin, Arabian, and Darley. A 
fun fact about Thoroughbred is that Black Beauty is a Thoroughbred. Fun fact number two is that Mariah Storm, which is the horse that inspired the movie Dreamer, is a Thoroughbred. Bonus fact is that Secretaria is a Thoroughbred. The next breed of horse is a Frisian. Frisians are a very ancient breed of horse, ma very magnificent and majestic. Frisians are a Dutch horse that originates from the forest ponies that were bred for battle and farm work. They were also ridden by knights. Their price range is 5,000 to 32,000 plus. They are also very good actors as they appear in the series Game of Thrones and more shows and series. The next breed of horse is an Icelandic horse. The Icelandic horse is really fluffy, chubby, plump, and cute. There are lots of horses in Iceland. The Icelandic horse is one of the oldest breeds of horses in the world. They weigh 600 to 900 pounds and are 12 to 14 hands, which is about four to five feet, which is about the height of an average adult. They may be small, but please do not call them ponies. They are not one of the strongest breeds of horses in the world, although they are pretty strong and can be used for farm work. Their scientific name is Ecus Ferricabalus, and some unique features are that they have their sturdy built have heavy coats and two unique gates. Our next breed of horse is an American saddlebred. One big thing about American saddlebred horses is that they are the purest you can get to an American horse. There is no one in the world who loves the red, white, and blue better. In the 1700s, the colonists bought American saddlebreds and breeded them with an extinct breed named the Narragansett Pacer. The true fashion of saying American saddlebred should be Kentucky saddlers because they were their ancestors. Our next horse is a Dutch Warmblood. The Dutch Warmblood has few names, such as the Dutch Riding Horse. They are originally from the Netherlands and are most commonly used for English saddle activities, such as dressage and show jumping. They are a modern horse, and their weight is 15.2 at the winners. Stallions are 15.3 hands, which is about 63 inches to the lift. Their weight is about 1,430 pounds. Someone's chubby. The next breed of horse is an American saddle uh, is an is an American paint horse. The American paint horse, you may be thinking, why on earth is it called that? The American paint horse is called that because of its sharp outlines around each part of the color on its coat. Every American paint horse has a white coat and another color such as gray, brown, or black. Their height is about 14.2 to 15.2 hands tall, but those with thoroughbred heritage tend to be taller. The next breed of horse is an Arabian. The Arabian horse is also known as an Arab horse and was developed in the Middle East and the Arabian Peninsula. Their weight is six, I mean 800 to 1,000 pounds and their height is 14.1 to 15.1 pounds. Their most back, common back, back, colors are bay, black, chestnut, and occasionally dominant white and usually have Sabina Rabicano patterns. That was it for the breeds of the horse. That was a little bit long, but the rest of the side will be shorter. Hope you enjoy! The next topic how to take care of a horse and facilities of horse. One major thing to know is to never go near the back side of a horse because you have high chance of being kicked and it can have severe injury. But there's always a but. You can do that after you have known or owned the horse for at least a few months, but we still recommend to stay away. Like we have just taught you, you should never get on a horse from the back because you can be bucked very hard and again have severe injuries. These are the first few things riding instructors tell you. No offense to the riding instructors who do not tell you this, but you seriously should consider getting another one if they don't tell you this because then you can get this very severe happen. injuries if you didn't know that. You have to take care of a horse such as grooming and hoof picking every day. The first thing to do is grooming. For that you have to take a curry comb and do a circle movement to pick up all the dirt that you just uh, to pick up all the dirt. Why groom is so when you ride, your horse won't be itchy and get saddle sores. You have to use a hard brush, brush and flick off all the dirt of that was just picked up. After you have to use a soft brush to polish the horse's coat. Now you have to use the hoof pick to pick your horse's hooves. To do that, you have to stay away from the frog because it is sensitive and have to pick in between the frog and on the hoof. Horse needs a big facility that has a stable and a grass field to graze all day. You need a type of facility so your horse can grow big and strong and be a healthy boy. You don't want to have shavings on the floor of the stable so your horse doesn't do its business all over the bare ground. That would not be good. Our next topic is what to feed a horse. 
Knowing what to feed your horse is a big role of being an equine owner or breeder because if you do not know what to feed your horse, you are in big trouble because horses like all other animals need food and water to survive. Some good foods for your little baby will be tons of oats and hay and occasionally when you go on long hacks, pony camp, etc. You will give them an energy saving mix to keep them strong. What me and me and little clips recommend is Bailey's Energy Pellet a gentle giant will always be such a good little horsey that they deserve treats, such as apples, carrots, and occasionally sugar lumps. Our next topic is how to tell horses age and horses years versus human years. The average horse lives up to around 60 to 85.5 years in human years and in horse years about 20 to 30 years. You can also look at the chart on the slides to understand more. Have a look. The most common way of learning a horse's age is looking at the teeth. You can look for gavelines, grooves, and cup marks and star marks. You can also look at the angles and teeth. Now it's time for our next topic, types of time. First thing to know. First thing to know are the differences between saddles. And we'll pick up on that more from our next slide. First you have to learn the names of the saddles. The first saddle is the English saddle, and that one is used for show jumping and dressage. And is mostly used in the UK. They are more they are mostly black in color and are more of a fancy saddle. Now to our next saddle, the Western saddle is mostly used for barrel racing and way more. They have beautiful patterns and are mostly used in the US. There are tons of more saddles but they all are linked to these two. So basically they are the same exact saddle but made for different activities like the English saddle has another saddle which is the dressage saddle but it's technically the exact same thing. But we don't recommend using a dressage saddle for jumping. The next topic is parts of a saddle, and again, just like with the anatomy, we're not going into detail, but just down to make Let's start with the western saddle. The knob on the saddle is the horn. It is used to help the rider stay on, because occasionally in western, you use one hand that holds on to the horn, and the other on the right. The bump on the English saddle is a pommel. One riding English, when trotting or cantering, we rest our hands on the pommel. Both of the saddles have a cantle. It's the back of the seat. The billet strap is where the second girth goes, and only the western saddle has a second girth holder. Speaking about girths, first, the first girth holder is the latigo, and the girth is what's keeping the saddle on the horse. The English saddle also has a girth holder. It is behind the knee pad and the flap. The stirrup is on both saddles and is where you keep your foot, but the stirrup on leather is only on the English saddle. That means the stirrup on the English saddle is removable. The stirrups on the western saddle are not removable. They don't have stirrup leather that holds the stirrup. How is it for parts of a saddle? The right apparel is a very important when riding, and you need to know the three simple procedures of what to wear. First, you have to wear full pants, no shorts, no three-quarter pants, but full pants, because it is uncomfortable for you and the horse. Second, you have to wear a helmet so you don't get hurt if you fall off your horse. It's just like if you fell off your bike, but you're riding a cute, fluffy animal. Third, you have to wear boots that go over your ankle have, and have a big, nice heel. You have to wear boots so your foot gets stuck on the strap and you will be nice and secure. By the way, you should spend one or two minutes with your horse so you can build a trust bond with your horse and not just come to the, come to the stables and the horse is already tapped up. No, you should spend a few minutes with him, so, uh, with him or her so you don't get bucked or spook them. Now it's time for how to ride a horse. There are 
four simple steps to start riding. First, you have to get on the horse. You have to get. You have to start on the left side, just like if you were putting on the girth. Then you have to put your left foot in the left stirrup and land your right foot into the right stirrup. Next, you have to get on the horse. Uh, get the horse moving. To do that, you have to gently push on the horse's side with both your feet. Uh, and to get a trot, you have to take a crop and hit the horse. You might think this hurts uh, the horse, but it feels like no nothing to them. It's like giving yourself on the, a pat on the back. It's a ho little horsey symbol that I need to go faster. To stop, you just have to pull on the rein. To turn, you have to remember to hold your reins as if you were holding an ice cream cone and open them like if you're opening a door. Now it's time for fun facts slide. This is our last slide of information. Our, fir our first fun fact is that horses usually live up to 25 years old if they're domesticated, but old Billy, however, lived up to 62 before his death. Next, horses do not vomit, unlike many mammals. Even if they wanted to, they can't. Did you know horses are measured in hands? Each hand is four inches. Most horses are 15 hands high, which is about five feet, which is the size of an average human. The tallest horse is Samson, who was a shire horse and stood 21 hands above the ground, which is 84 inches, which is about seven feet. Bet this is something you didn't know. Horses can be cloned. The first horse cloning took place in Italy. A mule named Prometea was the first clone equine, and she had a daughter named Idaho Gem, whose birth was on May 4, 2003, and was surgically made to look like her mother. Violin bows are most commonly made with horse hair, and each is attached to another. A single bow will use one, 160 and 180 hairs. Most violin bows are made from dead horses. Some The hairs are taken from the horses that live in cold climates because the weather causes them to produce thicker hair than horses in warmer climates of the world. Thicker hair produces a stronger growth, bow which makes a better sound which benefits the person who's playing the instrument which um which helps like the audience and doesn't make up make them like sick of listening to violins. Disclaimer, we do not at all encourage you to buy these types of violin, violin bows with horse hair, but encourage you to buy the ones with synthetic hair. There are more than 300 breeds of horses in the world. The ones that we listed are not even a third of the amount of breeds. Horses are very intelligent as we are, but their brains are half the size of ours. Their brains are 22 ounces, which is only half the size of ours. It's sort of hysterical because of the size of their body compared to ours is literally 20 times bigger than a full grown adult. But their brain, on the other hand, is 20 times smaller. A bonus fact is that thoroughbreds are the only um, they're like the only breed of horse that have won the triple crown. A triple crown is very hard to get into. It consists of three races, the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness Stakes, and the, Be the Belmont Stakes. Um, and it's very hard to get into, and it is very, like... Very hard to get into even, and even to do. Yeah, and very hard to win, and thoroughbreds are the only be a horse that has ever actually won. Okay, that was it for the video. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment down below. Bye!